We come to our third area of, of um, interview, of our interview. Um, it is something that uh, has impressed me as a professor of uh, German culture and history at the University of Pennsylvania that there is this lawyer in Montgomery and McCracken in the office in Philadelphia who tells me all of a sudden, oh, I'm writing a book on Erwin Lahusen. And I said, who is Erwin Lahusen? <laughs> And all of a sudden, when uh, Harry Schaub uh, tells me what happened, what is interesting, what uh, brought his interest into the study, um, I learned Erwin Lahusen was the highest uh, officer in the German resistance. In this case, the highest officer who was not killed afterwards by the Gestapo. So he could give testimony in Nuremberg about the resistance and about Hitler. That is more or less the, the interest that all of a sudden uh, I found it very intriguing what you were doing. We had a meeting, we talked about it. We were in the Union League, I remember, when you, when you told me and I was impressed by all these archival research, by a lot of stuff. How did you, as a lawyer, um, engage? How did you bring, uh, uh, get the time? And um, you actually brought the book to completion. It's an English version, it's a German version, and it is a big success. I uh, have always been interested in the resistance against the uh, Nazis inside Germany. It was not an easy fight because the uh, Gestapo had friends everywhere. But uh, Wolfgang Meyer, who's a, a lawyer in Vienna and a friend of mine, knows, knew and knows he's still kicking uh, uh, the story of Erwin Lahusen in some detail and introduced me to Mrs. Uh, La Husen and other members of the family. So uh, uh, that opened the door. Um, but then there is a step to going into archives. Yes. Uh, writing it down, not writing having a writer's it. block. Right. <laughs> and uh, it took. Uh, you know, it took more than five years. Uh, a consul is not doing, just doing diplomatic work. It's not just representative. It's not just throwing parties. Uh, right. But, but writing about a major figure of the Austrian army, who yeah. then was uh, taken over by the German Wehrmacht, and rose to, the, to this occasion. The book is, is, is very lively written, and it starts out with La Husen being interviewed as the first uh, witness in, in Nuremberg. To the surprise of journalists, they yeah. said, who is he? Yeah. Because he was really, you have to be in the up yeah. there, meaning in intelligence, you cannot be in front. So many people didn't know about him. And what, what you have uh, on uh, Earth is a lot of material about the up there, about the intelligence, about the Holocaust, about things that went on. What did Catherine say, your wife? Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she, you she were was... always in, in, in Vienna and doing stuff, I assume. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, very understanding and supportive. So but you, were, you were already uh, stepping further to Strauss Huppé. Yes, and with you, with uh, it's a new article. It's it's this one that you that yes. you pointed out, and and uh, in the journal of uh, intelligence and counterintelligence, an article on on Robert Strauss Huppé, who was a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Did you know him? Yes, you I saw him when I came to Penn. But I, if you asked me about this, then I would have to respond. He was the epitome of cold warrior. I, I read your article, and um, uh, Harry Schaub makes a special case uh, for <clears throat> European emigre being in the United States after World War II, already in World War II, but later and advising the American government 
on uh, communism, more or less. And uh, Charles Huppé became one of those advisors. And um, the one thing you have to, since you had him in class, I mean, at Penn, and at that time yeah. he was still sort of an uh, advocate of, of uh, American European uh, interests, but then he jumped to Asia Ooh. and then to Vietnam and all this. Can That's you say the, something about that? He wrote a, a one autobiographical book. And in that book, he visited uh, as a representative of the American government, he, he uh, of all things, uh, got to the point where the Chinese group around Chiang Kai-shek told him that with one or two, he write, this is written, this is one of them, one or two American divisions, and Chiang Kai-shek could win the war. Thank God we didn't do that. Yeah, but was he part of it? What? Did he advise? Oh, later, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and the, uh, no, we we did not intervene ever sure. in the Chinese yeah. Civil War. But it is War. interesting how far Charles Huppé has advised. Oh. And, well, okay, he wrote this up, and uh, I have, the article I wrote originally covers only his service in military intelligence, and... <clears throat> He jumped ship on me. When we were called to active duty on June 1, 1951, guess what? He didn't go because he hated Washington. And therefore, he jumped ship. And he was substituted for by Dick Gordon, who was the treasurer of the University of Pennsylvania, had to leave, went on active duty. And so that's part of the and story. And where did he go, Charles Huppé? Well, he went and formed uh, that uh, publishing company. Yeah, he stayed on and, uh, because he couldn't stand Washington. And we so were he done. wrote and advised, but at some point, if he became again important and influential? He became more influential. Had he gone on active duty, he would have, like the rest of us, commuted okay. to the Pentagon. That makes sense, yes. Yeah. Uh, he didn't me. do it. He, he got was, out. He has, he has founded the Foreign uh, Policy FPRI Research, uh, Research Institute. Institute in Philadelphia. What is behind this? Was it part of this sort of establishing well, his own empire? Well, later, he, later yeah. that's what he did. So uh, when you look back at these years at his student or two, three semesters, and want to summarize for people who have known, have not known of Charles Hupé, what would you say? His service in um, World War II and the following Cold War, he pointed out the, the dangers of yes, sure. world communism. Yes. The trouble was he <laughs> kept misjudging he kept who the enemies yes. were. Okay, good. That's, and I think, I a valid a, good point. And yeah. makes, makes, there are others like him. And it is not, it is not unique. Thank you, Harry. Great. I think it was a, a great. You you mentioned your age, it's ninety, but you have all, some years to go, and we hope to you will you will publish the book. All and right, you, good. And and you will you will uh, criticize me sure. if I don't tell the truth. Okay, good. Okay, good ending. Thank <laughs> you. Good. Thank you.